Welcome to Ministry in Motion, where we explore best practices for your ministry in the 21st century. I'm Anthony Kent. And I'm Derek Morris. And whether you're a pastor of a large congregation or maybe a country church, a lay leader in your local congregation, uh, today's topic will be a blessing to your life and ministry. It is, Derek. Being an astute leader in dangerous times. I think those of us who've been involved in ministry in any context can recognize that there are times that uh, we, need, we need help. Exactly. Um, just being aware of the environment, what's happening around us, and adjusting our leadership appropriately in, those, in that environment. And our guest today is Delbert Baker. And you know, Dr. Baker is one of my favorite guests on Ministry in Motion because he has a broad experience and brings such keen insight. So I know this is going to be a blessing to our Ministry in Motion viewers. I agree. And I'm looking forward to doing the interview with him as well. We're so pleased that you've joined us. Stay right, stay right where you are. We'll be right back with more of Ministry in Motion. Welcome to Ministry in Motion. Our topic today is being an astute leader in dangerous times and our guest, Dr. Delbert Baker. Dr. Baker, welcome. We're so Thank pleased you. that you're here with us. Good to be here. Now, being an astute leader in dangerous times, tell us more about that. Well, I mean, we're living in times that are challenging for any leader, no matter what their profession is. And there's a difference between being a leader and then being a leader who's ready to face the challenges. And what we'll talk about today is really going to equip uh, the listeners to be able to astutely and eloquently uh, respond to challenges. Now, when we talked before, you brought up a phrase, a very intriguing phrase, which was situational awareness. What, what is that? What does it mean? Well, really, it's a powerful concept, uh, Anthony. It's, it's one that really takes the best that we have and really focuses our skills and abilities on the situation that we're in at a given time. Uh, it's a term that's really borrowed from the military, so it's not really original with Christian circles or whatever. It's like the soldier in the battlefield. If he's not aware of a situation, he can get totally caught off guard and, and mm. face calamity and danger uh, immediately. So we're taking that concept and applying it in the professional or the spiritual sense, situational awareness. Right. So it's being aware of our environment and how to respond appropriately to the changes in our environment. Well, it's really three things. First of all, it's scanning the environment. In other words, you've got to train your thinking to be able to look at where you are and what's going on around you. Scanning is one. Mm -hmm. And then quickly after that, you want to make the proper judgment and then be able to decide what you're going to do and then do it. Okay. okay. So uh, in that concept is wrapped both the scanning, the judgment, and then the action. Okay. And so we're saying that in the context of the church or, or a person's profession, you know, you can be in an environment and sometimes we're absolutely unconscious of what's going on around us. And as a result of that, we just get blindsided. Mm, mm. So how is that helpful as a leader today? Particularly, yeah, in leadership, how is that helpful today? Okay, I guess if we want to make a graduated scale, I mean, you have the, let's say maybe the low wrong leader that mm -hmm. basically is just making it. Then you've got the leader who's, let's say the average leader, who's pretty good. I mean, he's not good, not bad, but then you've got an outstanding leader, okay, who excels at what they're doing. And they're not only meeting the challenges, but they're getting ahead of the situation, okay? I'm saying that situational awareness, if one can develop that ability to scan, judge, and act, will put them in the higher rungs of leadership so they can kind of get ahead of the curve rather than simply always reacting to things that are happening around them. So they can see what's coming. Right. And there's some sort of predictive aspect to this. They can see what's coming, but they can also see what's happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, for example, if, if a lady goes out uh, in a dark parking lot at night, okay, by herself, mm. uh, if she doesn't have situational awareness, she's going to go out there and she's going to right there in the darkness of the parking lot, bumbling through her purse, trying to find her keys. 
uh, leaving herself a very vulnerable target to people who are around. Mm. Okay, but if she is using the ability or the uh, the ability to use situation awareness, she will be able to kind of scan her environment and say, listen, I don't want to put myself in that environment. So she says it's dark, it's dangerous, I'll get my keys before I go there. So when she goes there, she quickly gets in the car, locks the door after her, and she's off, okay? So it's really kind of reacting to where you are, but it's also protecting your assets, your person, or in the church case of a pastor, uh, the church or wherever they are. So it's a very practical concept, and it's one that a person can use, but they really have to kind of learn it. Okay. Well, you've, you've led us into a pastor or a church leader using it. How, how do you see a pastor or a church leader using this gift? Okay, well, I, I guess um, it's, it's a wide, it's a very, what they call a very heuristic a skill, meaning it's got great potential, it's got great possibilities. Mm -hmm. it's, it's all according to where you want to focus your situation awareness on. Uh, I, I have what I kind of refer to as a dimensional approach to situation awareness, and, I, and I'm using this in a Christian sense, and the four dimensions, mental, physical, social, spiritual, in any one of the realms you can take it. I mean, like for example, if let's say to be physically so situationally aware, mm -hmm. you're listening to your body. Okay, and so that if you see, if you're feeling pain or you're having some recurrent problems, SA with situation awareness, SA would say that she's focusing on that and say, what's going on here? Okay. You're not oblivious to it, you don't ignore it. Uh, if you take it socially, if you're constantly running into problems on your job or at home or wherever, and it's kind of a constant thing, I mean, situation awareness would say to you, am I doing something? Am I causing this? Mm. Is it only my environment? Mm. So you begin to look at yourself and check out what's going on around you or spiritually. Mm. I mean, if you're running into constant, if you're constantly falling to temptation, if you're constantly running into problems, SA would say, let me check out the environment. Let me check out myself to see where am I and see if I can maybe do something differently. Interesting. Powerful concept. Yeah, it really is. Now, I'd like to pursue this more with you, and particularly some Bible characters sure. who displayed uh, an amazing awareness of their environment and appropriately responded to us. So stay with us. We'll be right back with more of Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion. Our guest today is Dr. Delbert Baker, and we're looking at astute leaders in difficult times. And I'd like to explore with you some biblical characters, Dr. Baker, who, who really had, what was that phrase again? Situational awareness. Situational awareness. SA. Who, who had situational awareness in, in, remarkable, in a remarkable context. And the, uh, out of the Old Testament leaps the story of David and Abigail and her husband, of course, Nabal. Nabal. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, you know, we, we know that David reached out to, to Nabal and Nabal was just, he was difficult and cantankerous. Oblivious. <laughs> e exactly. Totally unaware of right. a, an appropriate behavior. But Abigail, tell us a little about Abigail. Well, you know, Abigail was a classic example of a person who is using great essay skills, situational awareness skills. You know, the sons of Issachar, the men and women who understood their times. Mm. Well, that's really what a person who exercises situational awareness does. They understand the times they're living in and their environment. Yes. And so I, I think from this, this particular program, if the listener can just simply walk away with one basic principle, I'm going to pay more attention to where I am and what's going on. And that's what Abigail did. Yeah. She was aware of the dynamics of David coming in and her husband who was just so churlish and how he responded. And she adroitly and very just appropriately got in there and saved a very, very messy situation by using good skills of understanding what's going on around them, making a judgment and then doing something about it. Mm. Abigail's a great example. Now, David was obviously part of that whole event that took place, but other times in David's experience, in David's life, he wasn't so aware, was he? That's correct, that's correct. You, you know? well, we, and David's a classic a, a example of a leader who, who has these great skills, but they often don't use them. They can turn them on and turn them off. Mm. Like we see great leaders all the time who are just stellar. I mean, they're just brilliant. And then they make a stupid mistake, just yeah. a flat out stupid mistake. Why do they do that? 
Well, they lose sight of the surroundings. They become very proud, very arrogant, very caught up in themselves. And as you were saying during the break, uh, they really don't use the skills of Bible study and prayer and keeping focused on what's going around, being mindful of what's happening around them. So I think Kent, that's a key principle. Yeah, and really the, the Christian has a, a wonderful resource available to them with, with prayer and the Holy Spirit right. that, that can guide them and almost give them an intuitive response um, through the power of the Holy Spirit to, to lead them. Right, and, and I think prayer and Bible study leads them to, as Proverbs brings out so many times, be quick to listen and slow to speak. Mm. So good essay skills also uh, implies that if I'm in a situation, I, I want to check it out. Yeah. If you're in a church board, if you're in a church business meeting, if you're in a professional setting, don't talk so much. Mm. Listen and try to pick up what's going on around me mm. so I can be aware of the situation and then through uh, the prompting of the Holy Spirit or through divine insight or your own intelligence, you mix that together and come up with the appropriate response. So it's, it's something that, it doesn't come really naturally with many people. Yeah. You know, like, like you mentioned Peter earlier, mm. you know, Peter was quick to speak, slow to listen. Mm. And as a result, he got into many problems. Yeah. And so it's kind of a incumbent on us just to just stop and think about it. Why don't we unpack some of Peter's experience? Mm. I'm thinking of the fireside experience that Peter yes. had. Unpack that for us, Delvin. Well, you know, Peter's mistake there was not being aware of himself initially. I mean, if he had listened to himself before and saw his proneness to kind of have the answer, to be the know-it-all, to be the one to quick to jump out to lead when he really wasn't ready. Or he, even listening to Jesus because Jesus had given him a message. He did. He did. And he tended, he just seemed to flat out ignore it. Right. And then so when everyone was running, I think he felt a little nervous about the, what happened in Gethsemane and that he wanted to follow Jesus was by the fireside with the maid. And she says, look, you're like one of these guys, you know, you sound like him. You talk. In fact, I think I've seen you, Peter. Yeah. And he swears the first time and says, no, I don't know anything about him. Well, that's like a warning to us. If we see ourselves react in a certain situation, that should be a key to us that that's a weakness of mine. Yeah. A church leader, a pastor. If yeah. they're in a board meeting and somebody presses their button and they get angry and upset, whatever, that's a signal, hey, I better watch out, like Peter should have done. He didn't. He left himself there. She asked him the second time, the third time, and then he flat out you know, denied his Lord, and, and he forever was um, sensitive about it. But the good thing about that story is he did learn his lesson. Absolutely. And he became a great leader, which says to us that we may blow it at times, but there is hope for us, there is salvation, there's mercy, it's that kind of thing. Exactly. You know, I think of the example in, in Acts chapter 3, where Peter and John went into the temple and yes. uh, they, they healed the, the, the crippled man. And then the way that they appropriately responded to that environment, it was just wonderful. Right. What do you mean by that? Tell me, tell me what you mean by that. Well, the, 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 the crowd erupted. He, he seized the opportunity to speak to the people right, right. and that's to good. share the gospel with them. This was a golden that's opportunity. a golden moment. Yeah, that's yeah. good. That's and he good. was led by that, right. that situation and, and seized it. I also think of Acts chapter 10, where the Lord prepared him for a knock at the door by some Gentiles, right. gave him a, a, a vision of the clean and the unclean animals coming down, gave him a clear lesson, which prepared him as a leader to appropriately respond. Well, well, you know, Ken, I think it's a, it's a brilliant point because it really brings out that SA can be enhanced by the revelations from God, yeah. by, through prayer and Bible study again, that as you read the word, uh, the Bible makes us aware of the times we're living in and causes us to be a student and do something about it. If I can say a quick thing, and that is Jesus, when he was talking to the disciples, he showed them the temple, remember that? And said, yes. this temple's coming down. And they said, Lord, it can't happen. But he says, it's coming. He says, in fact, you should watch and pray, watch the signs because it's not gonna be here indefinitely. We have signs today that tell us that things around us are coming down and there are things that are happening in the situations surrounding us that we can say, let me, let me just check things mm -hmm. out and I have indication that time isn't going to be as long as I think it's going to be or people are saying it's going to be. The situation can inform us, we can be aware and be the better for it. That's, that's a valuable point. And that really helped the early church. That particular example you're talking about, they weren't tied to Jerusalem. 
and, and the, the, the city. They emerged from the city and, and took the mission out as a result of being astute leaders. Yeah, and, and I think that, you know, if, if you're in a situation in a leadership position, you have a goal and a mission, whatever you want to do, if you see an opening, if the situation informs you that there's an opening, shouldn't we seize that moment, seize that opportunity and go for it? Mm. Uh, let's say for a young person, if they're in a job or they have some position or whatever, then they see, they have an impression, maybe I need to take advantage of this, get some more education or get ahead here. They seize the moment and take the courage to move out on it and do something about it. That's good situation awareness. Yeah, yeah. Now, I'm sure that there are obstacles that leaders face and encounter. And uh, I'd love to explore with you straight after the break how to move through those obstacles good. and conquer those obstacles. Good. So stay right with us. We'll be right back with more of Ministry in Motion. Welcome back to Ministry in Motion, where our topic is, is being an effective leader in dangerous times. And we're particularly exploring situational awareness with Delbert Baker. Delbert, what are some of the obstacles that a leader can have in working with situational awareness? That's a great question. Probably the greatest obstacle is themselves. Uh, if, okay. if people allow themselves to get in the process and if you're not even thinking about it, often you're unconscious. That's probably the greatest obstacle, just being unaware of even the concept of essay. Uh, that's why in this case, to be forewarned is to be forearmed. If you can just know about it and think about it, you may not always do it, but it, at least you know about the concept that that is a skill, a talent you can use. So can I just butt in here? Is it mm -hmm. ignorance or is it just being closing your mind to the outside and just being so determined that whatever happens, yeah. you're just going to I, I, I think the first mind. one is, is ignorance. I mean, the fact okay. that a lot of people just don't think about thinking. Right. They just don't take the time to think. They mm -hmm. just want to talk and do. Mm. So you got to think first and then, uh, but there are some like that after they do know the concept, but they become so full of themselves or what they want to do, they become somewhat blinded mm. or tunnel vision and they just go for what they want regardless of whatever anyone's saying around them. And so that's a problem. But let me just give you a little cute little acronym that, that they have found to be very helpful in either helping or hindering a situation awareness. It's called HALT, H-A-L-T. First is hunger. H stands for hunger. Right. That if a person's not in good physical shape, if they're bad off physically, often our resources are low and we're not being aware because we're just tired, worn out, hungry, just disoriented. That's one. The second one is is the H stands H A is anger. Okay. Uh, if someone presses your emotional button, I'm going to write these and, down. And they get you upset, Kent. I right. mean, we all know it. Uh, that can throw us off and then we become blinded and you know in terms of what's going on around us We just just do something stupid or foolish or whatever the case may be Now that anger is not only just the emotion being mad, but is also talking about emotional period Okay, you mentioned David in the last segment. Yes. Well, David's uh, emotion then was lust mm. he became so passionate when he saw uh, Bathsheba that he no longer was aware of the situation. He forgot that he was, he was king. He forgot that she was another man's wife. He forgot the fact that her husband was one of his generals yeah. fighting for him in the field when he should have been fighting as king. He yeah. lost all that with the emotion at that time. So hunger, anger, the L stands for loneliness. Okay. A lot of times we, we just have a strong need to be with people or to be loved or to be popular or to be whatever. And it causes us to lose our perspective. So that's a key one there. And then finally, the last one is being just flat out tired. Okay. People don't really understand the value of, of sleep and physically rested. Uh, I, I happened to hear what one of your programs on reclaiming lost members. And I heard you talking about people being tired or weary or worn out. Mm. But that, that works with so many areas. If we are in poor shape, Yes. We don't get it a lot of times. We, yes. Our resources are low and we miss moments. So those are some key areas that would help us that if we just do some of the basic things to stay in shape and be aware that will help us in our situational awareness. You know, it seems to me, Derek, uh, Delbert, mm -hmm. as I look through this list, hunger, anger, loneliness, tired. Mm -hmm. This all puts us in a vulnerable situation. It does. And behind a, well, in an embarrassing situation right. as well. Yeah, yeah. And I just think if a leader is, is aware of this 
and they, uh, I'll take myself for example, I, I know there's certain things, I know I have certain buttons, okay? Mm -hmm. I understand that. And I've seen over the years as a result of being in leadership positions and uh, just being sensitive. So I know that I, I wanna be sensitive if I get in a certain kind of situation. So I kind of put a double guard on then. Yeah. And so that helps me. So if a person's aware of themselves, taking heed like Paul says to yourself, lest you fall, yeah. That helps them to be aware when they come to situations and they're just the better off for it. Let's follow that point from the Apostle Paul a little further. Mm -hmm. What are some of the sorrows that are, can, can occur when we neglect oh. our environment yeah. or, or don't practice situational well, awareness? Well, this is, you know, it just, again, it goes to the dimension you're dealing with. Physically, if we're unaware, we can have a crisis and have some terminal situation we're not aware of that if we caught it earlier, we could have done something about it. Socially, the situation is that we're blinded. We can turn people off, lose friends, uh, destroy family relationships, and not even be conscious of it. You know, you, you take, for example, uh, phys uh, mentally, uh, being slothful or just being weak, not being keen and on top of our game because we're not astute. We're not paying attention to where we are mentally. And of course, spiritually, we can be growing further and further away from God and then not even be aware of it. We're not aware of the situation because we're just not in tune. You know, one of the frightening things is, is it's unnecessary. We don't have to go through these. They're not imposed upon us. It's something by our neglect or our lack of awareness, we could have totally avoided. Yeah, yeah you know, that's a, that's a good point. And, and I guess it's, it's one that we all deal with because how many times do we know something and we don't do it? Yeah. So even as we're kind of talking about this great concept here, situation awareness, uh, it's easy to talk about it, but I must confess it is, a, it is a skill and something one must work on to be habitually practicing it, okay? Yeah. And I'm happy that in the Christian experience, in the Christian context, there's grace. Mm -hmm. So that when we do blow it, yeah. you know, there may be consequences, yeah. but there is grace, God will not only forgive us, but he will help us to extricate ourselves from that hole that we slipped into. And so there's hope after kind of being situationally apathetic, yeah. you know, whatever. So we can come back and pull back from it. Excellent point. By the in, grace of God. In 30 seconds, what are some of the outstanding benefits of practicing situational awareness? Well, you can be exceptional. You can be above average in any of the four dimensions if you practice situational awareness. And Ellen White talks about, one of my favorite authors in the book, Confrontation, she talks about stellar Bible characters like Enoch and Elijah and various people who really at the top of their spiritual game, that's what we could do. If we can increase our SA in whatever dimension, mm. we can be better, we can go beyond where we are and not simply be satisfied with a whole hum spiritual or everyday existence. Mm. Dr. Delbert Baker, thanks so much. Thanks for coming on Ministry in Motion. Thanks for sharing these, these pearls. Okay. And we'd like to thank you for joining us as well. If you've enjoyed Ministry in Motion, we'd like to share a wonderful resource with you as well. Ministry, I guess you can pick the connection between Ministry in Motion and Ministry the Journal. If you're a pastor watching this program and enjoying it, we'd like to invite you to our website, ministryinmotion.tv. And there you may be eligible to discover how you can receive a complimentary subscription to Ministry Magazine. This will come to you six times each year, every second month, and it'd be a pleasure to send this to you. If you're a lay leader or an elder, come and visit ministryinmotion.tv as well, because we'll have some other resources there for you that will bless your ministry and support you in your ministry. Also on our website at Ministry in Motion, we, we have a vast array of other resources Come and visit us, write to us, send us your feedback, but make sure you're with us next time on Ministry in Motion.